Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Cubane series. It's a series where we're making one for dicarboxylate Cubane from household materials. A lot of you would know um, this has been going on for a little while now. We've hit a bit of a certain roadblock. I want to talk about where we are at the moment, but also what's going on in the literature in the past over two years and also what other people on YouTube are doing. It's a lot of time for other people to be able to make videos on this topic, which is super cool. Out of all that, I have some ideas of how we can progress forward. I will have to go back and make more of the reagents. So rather than waiting on a video with this new idea while I make all this stuff, I wanted to present this idea because I think it's a good idea, but I'm, I've been wrong about many things in this video series so far. Okay, so first of all, where are we at the moment? I think I've filmed two other intros to this video, but I've scrapped it because it's just boring. Very quickly, we'll, we'll run over it. The last episode of the Cubane series, we've been trying this UV reaction. We've been hitting it with a few different light sources and it hasn't appeared to work. A sort of fear crept in. Maybe it was working and has been working all along, but we weren't able to detect that it was working. So that failure comes from the fact that we're using TLC to analyze where the reaction is and whether it's working or not. Initially we used permanganate stain, and but then the worry was maybe, oh, the permanganate stain might not work. Or maybe the iodine doesn't show it up properly. The suggestion was to use vanillin, a vanillin stain, which I did. I got some vanillin recently. It was very pleasant. It smells very nice. Didn't give me great results, honestly. It doesn't seem like that's a great stain. So went to really one of the most universal stains, which is a cam stain, Ceric Ammonium Molybdate. Very reactive, very sensitive. Didn't show anything in terms of product spots. It doesn't seem like our UV step is actually working, but we can't tell it's oh, yeah. not working no, I didn't say that right. The fucking thing isn't working, right? That, it's not the problem of the TLC, it's the problem of the UV step. I could just keep trying. There are probably better TLC conditions. Some people helped me dig up this TLC conditions from the literature, which uses a different solvent. Maybe that's the cause of our issues, but maybe it's another little subtle issue. I'm not going to keep working on it now for the sake of me and for the sake of actually moving this project forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back <laughs> and make more uh, starting material for this UV step because we've run these reactions before. I'm going to have to re-watch my own video to remember all the tips and little bits I did <laughs> um, but I want to make quite a bit of starting material for this UV step. Now I want to talk about other people's work. YouTube stuff that's going on and the literature stuff that's going on and what I think from the literature we can pluck out and hold up and say let's use this idea. Now there are a few other people who are taking on the challenge of the cube, taking on the cube. I'm obviously just going to highlight the ones that have YouTube videos, but good luck to everyone. And if you're making any good progress, make sure you post somewhere and help everyone else out if you want to. Misfits Car Club, which uh, you know made cyclopentanone a little while ago, I think maybe over a year ago. No judgment, but um, I think you're attempting to take on the cube. So hopefully all is well there. Luma Ray made a video about taking on the cube, which actively taunted me. Some guy in a shed in Australia decided that making yellow tar and blowing up metal cans was no longer enough. You're on. You think you can get to the cube before I can? That's probably reasonable, but I won't believe you until you do it. You've got to face all these challenges I do too. Alright, I'm back. I had a goddamn dentist appointment in the middle of filming. It's fucking pitch black outside so max field med this channel has been attempting the cubane synthesis for quite a while now and had a few setbacks a few failures but has managed to work through it pretty well so it's, it's quite impressive what he's doing there's two things i want to highlight in his experiments that i think are really cool the first one is he's kind of crushing two uh steps together into one step rather than doing the bromination and then isolating the brominated product and then doing the deals older reaction he's just doing it all in one pot without isolating the intermediate. And it, and it is working for him now. I think he had some trouble with the purity of the dioxane. I thought that was really cool. Um, and it's something I might try next work through of all the steps. And the second really cool thing that he's doing experimentally is about the photochemistry step. Now he's not really up to the point of attempting the photochemistry step, but really early on, he built a sort of photochemistry reactor. Which he will 
I guess, eventually use. Like me, he sort of decided that 310 nanometer LEDs were a, were a cool pathway to go down. But rather than having it as just one big batch trying to shine the light through, he wanted to do it as sort of a flow setup. I'm going to be turning it into a flow reactor as well. So I bought a peristaltic pump and FEP tubing for the UV light to pass through. Teflon polymer tubes, the fluorinated polymer tubes, actually have really good transparency in the UV. Now this is really cool because you can get fluorinated polymer tubing quite cheap like on eBay and stuff. I think it's used in 3D printing or something like that. And that tubing is quite resistant to a lot of solvents and it's not that hard to link it with a sort of a peristaltic pump that sort of can pump solution all around and, and you've got yourself a really nice flow reactor in a sense. It's not a flow reactor, but like a re reactor that flows, you know? Someone in the comment section maybe a year ago pointed out to me that the fluorinated polymer tubing does have very good transparency to UV in the wavelengths that we want. So I went online and I bought all this tubing and I bought all these peristaltic pumps and I, I got really excited to run this flow reaction once we got the small scale pilot UV reaction working. So I've kind of been scooped. I say that very jokingly. In academia, scooping is when you're working on a research project. And of course, you've got to put all this time and all this grant money into working a, a project. And then someone else publishes before you. In publishing, you always got to be kind of the first one to do it. You, you want that novelty. So if someone else scoops you and, and you know publishes your idea first, it kind of really diminishes your work. It's not a thing on YouTube. It's not really a thing because it doesn't matter if I do something that someone else has done. I'm just saying that because the scooping is in his favor, not in my favor. If the scooping was in my favor, I'd probably be celebrating it. Best of luck to all those channels and everyone else who's taking on the synthesis. Anyway, that's YouTube. We want to talk about the actual literature now. Obviously last year, or it might have even been the year before that, we had the perfluorinated cubane. This is such a cool molecule. You've got all those fluorines around the cube and they're all so electronegative. They're kind of sucking that electron density away from the cube that you kind of get a void in the middle of the cube, which the researchers were able to put another electron into. Another highlight that came out recently, just a couple of months ago, I think, was this one Asa homocubane, which was synthesized for the very first time in the University of Queensland in collaboration with the CSIRO. So the Williams lab in Queensland have been doing cubane chemistry for so many years and keeps rolling out the hits. It's always such a pleasure to read such hardcore organic chemistry and it's great when it's sort of a cubane <laughs> spin on it because I just like cubane stuff. But okay, here's the real important paper out of the Zeisman Coleman lab uh, over at the University of St. Andrews. This is a cubane paper about an alternative way of doing the UV step. Instead of uh, pumping light directly into the first excited state of that cubane precursor, that state is really weakly absorbing, which doesn't really help. What, what you're doing is you're adding a photosensitizer in there, benzophenone, and instead you're putting the light into that benzophenone, and then the benzophenone is transferring that energy onto your cubane molecule and driving that reaction. And this is really important because benzophenone is very good at absorbing light, but also the wavelength is shifted away from this sort of 311 nanometer terrible window that we've been trying to hit, and actually they've done it with 390 nanometer light. You might not think it's that significant. We've been trying to do 311, now, you know, 390, what's the big deal? It's it's a world of difference. First of all, the transparency of, of glass, actually transparent at 390 nanometers, and it's not transparent at 311 nanometers, so negates the need for quartz, but mainly just the cheapness and the availability of UV light sources in that range, especially at 365 or 395, is so much better then at 311, that sort of deep UV stuff. I mean, I just have one of these lying around. This is 395, and this costs me like nothing. And there's more light coming off this, you know, terrible torch than there was out of one of our $15 per star <laughs> deep UV lights. Benzophenone is sort of a common chemical used in fragrances, so you can just buy it on eBay. It's, once again, stretching the definition of what a hardware chemical is, but it's still an available chemical. It's not like some obscure reagent that I have to go to Ligma Aldrich for. Their solvent choice being acetyl nitrile, 
the synthesis of it is crazy and you can't buy it and it's like it's too flammable to ship. We'll have to try it in an alternative solvent and hopefully that doesn't kill it. But I think this pathway is a great pathway forward. I mean, we could still build some sort of flow setup, but we can just pump in watts of 365 and actually have it work with these wavelengths. It's such a good idea and it's fantastic to see it work, but you do think... Surely someone's had that idea before, right? What if on someone's YouTube video there was a comment maybe suggesting this kind of thing years ago? Scooped, yeah, I'm, I'm back in scoop territory, yes. I'm scoop neutral again. Even though it's someone else's comment on one of my videos that I didn't even respond to, we're counting that as a scoop. Anyway. <laughs> Looking forward to trying this once we have more starting material, we'll probably have to go to the double deprotected starting material just for consistency to try and match that paper. Getting to Cubane this year, was that the claim? I might have said within a year on a previous video and that might have been six months ago. We're going to do it this year. Cubane this year, 2023 Cubane. Print the shirts, make the bumper stickers, 2023 Cubane we're doing.